Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Shivangi Mishra. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. India's PM Modi calls for penalizing nations backing terror. Pakistan's default risk source amidst political turmoil delay in IMF review. And Inflation jobs loom large as Nepal prepares to vote. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday called for penalizing the countries supporting terrorism as part of their foreign policy in an indirect reference to Pakistan. Addressing the no money for terror ministerial conference in New Delhi, the PM said, there is a need to uproot terrorism by breaking its support network and finances. In an obvious reference to Pakistan and China, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday said certain countries support terrorism as part of their foreign policy, while some others support it indirectly by blocking action against terrorists. Addressing the third edition of International Ministerial Conference, No Money for Terror, on counter-terrorism financing in New Delhi, PM Modi said there is a need to uproot terrorism by breaking its support network and finances. He also added that anyone who supports radicalization should have no place in any country. The two-day conference hosted by the Indian government aims at addressing pressing global militancy issues and curb financing for militant activities. Uprooting terrorism needs a larger proactive response. If we want our citizens to be safe, then we cannot wait until terror comes to our homes. Addressing the conference, India's Interior Minister Amit Shah said, financing of terrorism is more dangerous than terrorism the threat of which cannot and should not be linked to any religion, nationality or group. India has been the victim of some major terror attacks over the past two decades, mostly linked to terror groups based in neighbouring Pakistan, while China has on several occasions foiled international efforts to take action against terrorists on the global front, including against the mastermind of 2008 Mumbai attacks lashkar e taiba chief Hafiz Saeed. India on Friday launched its first privately made rocket Vikram S, named after Indian Space Agency's first chairman Vikram Sarabhai. The launch vehicle achieved all its mission objectives, making the operation successful. India on Friday successfully launched the country's first privately made rocket Vikram S from Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sri Harikota. The launch vehicle was developed by Hyderabad-based startup Skyroot Aerospace, headed by former engineers of Indian Space Research Organization ISRO. The operation named Praramb, meaning beginning, created a milestone in Indian space history by opening the space sector to private companies. Minister of State, Department of Atomic Energy and Space, Dr. Jitendra Singh said the launch was a major step forward in the Indian space industry. A step forward to India developing its own space ecosystem and emerging as a frontline nation in the community of world nations. And of course, a turning point in India's startup movement. The 545kg rocket has been named after India's space program pioneer Vikram Sarabhai. The launch vehicle has the capability to carry payloads up to 83 kilograms. The company claims it to be the cheapest rocket in its category. Till now, ISRO had the monopoly in launching rockets, but with the agency opening its facilities for joint venture, more private companies may enter space ecosystem in future. The credit default swap of Pakistan has risen to 75.5% increasing the chances of the South Asian nation to default on its borrowings. This comes amid the delay in the ninth review by the global lender IMF 
for a bailout program. Former Prime Minister Imran Khan attacking the Shehbaz Sharif-led government has claimed Pakistan is on the verge of slipping into bankruptcy. Amid political turmoil and uncertainty over Pakistan's talks with the International Monetary Fund, IMF, the credit default swap, which saves the country from defaulting on loans, has soared to 75.5%, local media reports suggest. The rise in credit default will make it hard for Pakistan to raise foreign exchange when it needs 32 to $34 billion this fiscal year to meet its foreign obligations. In the remaining fiscal years, Pakistan still needs $23 billion. To make things worse for Pakistan, this agreement between the South Asian nation and the IMF over flood impact has been delaying the review meeting for its loan program. Pakistan's finance ministry, after the virtual meeting of IMF and Finance Minister Ishak Dar, confirmed the disagreement and said both parties will expeditiously finish their technical engagement as part of the ninth review of Pakistan's bailout program. Meanwhile, Pakistan's former Prime Minister and opposition PTI chief Imran Khan, in a virtual address, attacked the ruling coalition on Thursday over the country's risking loan default. तो पाकिस्तान अपने कर्जों पे कितना डिफॉल्ट करता है वो पांच फीसद थी आज अस्सी फीसद है जिनके आने से अस्सी फीसद अब जब चांस आ गई तो मैंने आपको बता दिया है कि ये दुनिया के अंदर पैगाम चला गया है कि पाकिस्तान का अब दिवालिया निकलने लगा है खान सेड विद रूपी टेकिंग अ डिप एंड कंट्रीज वेल्थ डिक्रीजिंग ड्रास्टिकली पाकिस्तान वोन बी एबल टू पे ऑफ दी लोन ई फर्दर क्लेम्ड दैट अंडर करेंट रेट ऑफ इंफ्लेशन 50 million people are on the verge of slipping into poverty. The remarks come as Pakistan approaches the December 5 deadline to pay $1 billion against the maturity of Islamic bonds, while the finance minister Ishak Dar has repeatedly assured for bond payments, the international market remains skeptical over his assurances. In news from Nepal, hit hard by inflation and lacking job prospects, Nepalis are all set to vote in general elections on Sunday. That few expect to bring drastic change or a government able to revive an economy growing at one of the most slowest rates in South Asia. A report. Frustrated by crippling costs and lacking job prospects, Nepalis will vote in general elections on Sunday that few expect to bring drastic change or a government able to revive an economy growing at one of the slowest rates in South Asia. The election pits the ruling alliance led by Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Diyoba's Nepali Congress against main opposition CPN UML party led by former PM KP Sharma Oli who is being backed by royalists. There are no pre-election polls in Nepal home to about 30 million people, but political analysts expect the ruling alliance to retain power. About one-fifth of country's people who live on less than $2 a day have been hit hard by high inflation, hovering over 8% this year. The Nepali Congress has promised to create 250,000 shops every year if it is returned to power, while CPN UML pledged to create 500,000 shops every year. Surging global energy and food prices have hurt the import-dependent economy of Nepal, sandwiched between regional giants China and India, as it struggles to recover from the COVID-19 blow to the key tourism industry. So what I expect the government, the newly government, is to focus on tourism because we have a really good nature and we are rich in natural resources. So a lot of tourists are coming after COVID. That was not expected after the COVID. Nepal's election panel has set up almost 22,000 polling stations nationwide with more than 11,500 candidates in the fray. The results are expected within two weeks. A third of Nepalis are illiterate and each voter will get four ballots to choose 275 members of parliament and 550 members of seven provincial assemblies by stamping party-specific pictograms such as sun, a tree, a plug and an umbrella. 
Sri Lanka's central bank governor has said that if the current fiscal policies are maintained, then the country's inflation would likely to be below 4 to 5 percent by the end of the next year. Inflation in the island nation has trended downwards from the end of October, easing to 66 percent after hitting 69.8 percent in September. Sri Lanka's Central Bank Governor Nandlal Virasinghe said in a statement to the Parliament on Thursday that the country's inflation would likely be below 4 to 5 percent by the end of the next year if the current fiscal policies are maintained. Inflation in the island nation has trended downwards from the end of October, easing to 66 percent after hitting 69.8 percent in September. Sri Lanka has been gripped by a deep financial crisis this year caused by record low foreign exchange reserves that have left the island nation of 22 million people struggling to pay for essential imports including fuel, food, cooking gas and medicine. State Minister of Finance Asanka Shehan Sema Singhe has said that the country has postponed a round of debt restructuring talks initially expected to be held on Thursday to allow central bank and treasury officials to provide clarifications sought by the country's creditors. Sima Singh said that there are different concerns that different creditors want to be cleared, so it was decided that these clarifications would be communicated first and then new dates would be sent for another round of talks. The island nation formally kicked off the talks in September after securing a preliminary 2.9 billion US dollar bailout with the International Monetary Fund, a step on a path out of the country's worst financial crisis in a decade. But it needs to secure financing assurances from key creditors, including China, Japan and India, before the funds can be dispersed. The mesmerizing autumn season is at its peak in India's Jammu and Kashmir territory. Tourists from across the country are flocking to the Mughal Gardens to witness its beauty and picturesque atmosphere created by the autumn leaves of Chanar trees. A large number of domestic tourists are thronging Srinagar city of India's Jammu and Kashmir territory to enjoy the autumn chill and catch a glimpse of the fiery chanar or oriental plane trees. The leaves of chanar are scattered beautifully on the streets across the valley and at the famous Mughal garden. The unique chanar leaves turn red and golden brown before falling on the ground, giving a kaleidoscopic look to the valley, which has always attracted nature lovers. A tourist said she enjoyed the breathtaking scenic beauty. Snowfall ka apna ek maja hai autumn mein ye jo patton pe jo ye pila pan a gaya hai aur ye jo khushnuma kar raha hai mahol ko aur mausam ko aur man ko, wo baat jo hai wo aaj bahut zyada appeal kar rahi hai. To we we are with family and we are very happy to be here. Or particularly ye jo jahan baithe hain, so ke Mughal Gardens to ye autumn mein view hi alag hota hai on particularly on account of the chinar. चिनार देखने लोग far off places जाते हैं, photo shoots होते हैं, wedding shoots होते हैं तो। The autumn season is also known as Harud in the local language, which denotes the foggy season with different hues in the air. Tourism is the mainstay of the Kashmir Valley's economy, and the sector is gradually recovering from the woes of coronavirus pandemic. Hundreds of Hindu devotees are thronging the famous Sabri Mala temple in southern India as it reopened this week after a COVID-induced hiatus. The hill temple, which pays homage to the celibate god Ayyappan and draws millions of worshippers every year, is one of a few in India that bar entry to women. Hindu devotees from across India thronged the famous hill shrine of Sabri Mala in India's southern Kerala state on Thursday as it reopened after a one-year-long hiatus due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Devotees were seen standing in a queue as they marked the beginning of the nearly two-month-long annual pilgrimage season to the temple which will end on December 27. The hill temple which pays homage to the celibate god Ayyappan and draws millions of worshippers a year is one of a few in India that bar entry to women from age 10 to 50 years. Authorities expect more than 4 million devotees to visit this year. Upholding the right to equality of worship, the Supreme Court had in 2018 ruled that the ban on women and girls entering the Sabrimala temple could not be considered essential religious practice and should be lifted. But many devotees have refused to abide by the ruling and subsequent attempts by women to visit it have been blocked.
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.